Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today with Wanamaker Entertainment Group, the official ticket partner of Comcast Sportsnet. And beside me, I've also got Sean Doyle of the Savory Grill. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for being here. Our pleasure. What are we making today? We're doing a uh, pan-seared barramundi with uh, quinoa tabbouleh and some red beet foam, and also some local bison, which we're doing with a pave potato, some uh, pickled uh, mushrooms. Very nice, let's get started. Okay, sounds great to me. Well, let's start off with the pave, since it's the most timely thing. Okay. So, would you mind grabbing me the cream over there? Sure thing. What we're gonna do is take um, a pan, and we're gonna whisk one yolk, one egg, and we're gonna add some cream to it. This will give our pave, pave some stability so that it won't uh, collapse. Okay, what is a pave? It's actually a dessert term mm -hmm. that we as chefs like changing, modifying, <laughs> so um, what we've done is uh, actually used it. It's basically a firmer scalloped potato. Okay. Is what it basically comes down to, so. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of our uh, cream base, mm -hmm. basically a simple custard. So what we're gonna do is just shingle these out. Now we're gonna fill the bottom of the pan, and each layer we're gonna salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Very important. Oh yeah, we season as we go along here. So. And these aren't super, super thin. No, no. Um, you'll find out that a russet potato is a very dry potato, so it mm -hmm. has a tendency of absorbing a lot of the moisture from the cream, but the cream will allow it to give some silkiness to it. Oh so. yeah. The egg will stabilize, so. Um, I'm just gonna show you one layer. So what we're gonna do is just, like I said, put the shingle or potatoes out. How many layers would you normally do? Um, so we're completed with our potatoes, follow the recipe. Okay. <laughs> it's basically gonna be about two inches tall. So we're gonna hit it with a little bit of uh, thyme. Mm -hmm. So speaking of the recipe, this is gonna be in the January edition of the Lehigh Valley Style Magazine. When we've added all our layers, what we're gonna do is put it in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven mm -hmm. for about 90 minutes. I recommend covering it, because this way, when we do take it out, you can actually refinish it back up in the oven. Okay. We're gonna start on the bison. Let's all come right, over here. All right, look at this, this is gorgeous. Okay, what we've done is taken a, a strip loin of bison. Now traditionally, when people look at a bison, or a strip loin in general, what they're doing is gonna cut regular strip steaks out of it. So basically something equivalent to this. And then this is what you'll see most people serve in a restaurant or even, you know, out on your grill at home. And this was raised locally? Yeah, this is a local bison. So this is from Backyard Bison, Coopersburg. Great. These are really young women, mm -hmm. very tender. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're gonna do is cut the tail end of it off. Okay. Why do we're gonna you do that? save that because we're gonna cut strip loin fillets out of it. Right now, very simple. You're gonna cut it down the center of the line. And I know bison's super lean, but this has some great marbling to it. It does. I'm impressed by that. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it is very lean, very healthy yeah. for you, and that's what's great about a great alternative. And because we want to make it a little round, we're gonna cut a little bit off of each square end. Mm -hmm. Save it. Yeah, we can make grind it, make a burger. Oh, you better believe mm. it. Or braise it, make something yeah. out of it. Um, but traditionally, we could take this and actually serve this as uh, a barrel roasted strip so we could sear it off, throw it in the oven, finish it up, and carve it. Or we could do what we're doing with this dish, where now, we're actually doing fillets. Beautiful. Now, yeah. is bison readily available to consumers in a, um, just a regular supermarket? Nowadays, um, certain cuts are available in the okay. supermarkets. We're seeing more and more at the farmer's markets. Yeah. So, what we're gonna do is actually, we'll start searing this off in the meantime, because right. we got our pave in the oven right now. Sure do. And after we pull the pave out of the oven, we actually put it in the refrigerator, allow it to chill, so that we can veil it, cut mm. it, shape it, and we'll come up with something really nice to work this with. Sounds so. fun. Call now for these events and more at 215-568-2400, or shop 24-7 at wanatix.com. Wanamaker Entertainment Group, we are the guy. Call now for these events and more at 215-568-2400 or shop 24-7 at wanatix.com. Wanamaker Entertainment Group, we are the guy. We'll bring in Paul Conaway. Paul Conaway is the CEO and chairman of Wanamaker Entertainment Group. So tell me a little bit more about Wanamaker. Well, Wanamakers is in Center City, Philadelphia. Uh, we've been uh, providing sports theater and concert tickets since 1957. So you can pretty much get me tickets to any concert that I want to see in Philadelphia? Uh, anywhere in the country, for that matter. Anywhere? Even really big events like, say, the Super Bowl? Super Bowl, World Series. That's awesome. 
So next time I'm going to get tickets for, let's say, Taylor Swift when she comes to town, I would just give you a call? Well, the best thing to do, uh, you know, is to uh, pre-order your tickets in advance. Okay. You would say, you know, I'm going to need four, six, eight, however many you're going to need. And you would call me and say, that's how many I'm going to need. And I would call you on Monday and say, hey, I have your seats in Club awesome. Box 14. And uh, you're going to go to the show. You're going to look back. 90% of the uh, people in the venue are going to be behind you. <laughs> that's fantastic. So I guess you can get pretty good seats then. Yes, we get the best seats uh, for in the venue. Let me ask you this, though. What if the whole concert sold out? Then what? You would still call me. and We usually have tickets that I hold back for our VIPs, mm -hmm. or I still have usually have accessibility to get that ticket for you. That is a great resource. Now, what's this I hear about 2300? 2300 is a new venue that we have in South Philadelphia that I'm very excited about. Yeah. We do pro boxing, MMA, wrestling, concerts, and we also have a new restaurant that we're getting ready to open. And we have some dynamic chefs that we're really excited about. Oh, that's so exciting to hear. Well, we have a really amazing chef with us today, and I hope you come back to taste with us in a little bit. I look forward to it. Great. Our Thank pleasure. you. See you there. All right, chef, what do we have going on? What, what I'm doing here is actually starting the sauce, okay. and we're going to start marinating the mushrooms. All right. The sauce itself is a black garlic romesco. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take some onions, and we're going to actually caramelize them until we got some good brown color yeah. on the outside of it. Hit it with some black garlics. Some. Uh, and this is the black art oh, here, right? Beautiful, isn't, isn't it? it? I get, I get, I get really excited about this. Yeah, it it's just good smells stuff. beautiful. Mm. <laughs> it's got such a deep, caramelly, molasses-like flavor. flavor. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're gonna hit it with some some almonds. Okay. And then we're gonna finish it with some black sherry. Hit it in a food processor. Finish it with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Very simple sauce, yeah. a lot of flavor, a lot of complexity. Great. So much from that black garlic. Oh yeah, beautiful. So. The mushrooms themselves, we're taking a little bit of white balsamic vinegar, water, a little bit of honey, and what we're going to do is actually take them, pour them over the mushrooms. We're going to hit it with a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, mm -hmm. and we're going to hit it with some thyme and parsley. And we're just going to let those hang out? Yep, we'll let them marinate. I like doing more of a, a quickle. A you know, as I opposed love that. to doing a real strong pronounced pickle. Mm -hmm. The mushrooms themselves have great flavor, so what we're trying to do is impart an additional level of flavor, flavor without overpowering. We don't want it to taste like vinegar. Right. We want the mushroom to come forward, but we want to give a little tartness like to our dish. an enhancement. Dish. You have it. Beautiful. <laughs> love it. You may assist me anytime. I'm a fast <laughs> learner. So we're going to hit it with a little bit of time. So boom. about how long would you let that sit for? I like short term, 20 mm -hmm. minutes, a half hour. It's nothing. Yeah, yeah, just enough so we can impart it. And if you want to um, add a little bit of caramel notes to it, like I've done here where I've taken the mushrooms and I've actually hit them in a pan with a little bit of olive oil okay. and caramelized them a little bit. Great. Add another layer of flavor. And any kind of mushroom would work? Any kind of mushroom. Great. Literally. Um, <laughs> You know, I want things that are a little more earthy, a little more rustic. Now, what we're going to do is, while this is cooking, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to keep an eye on our, uh, our onions, not to burn them. We just want to brown them very nicely. We're going to come over here and actually start our tabbouleh. We're going to go untraditional with this. Nice. We're going to take uh, some quinoa as opposed to bulgar wheat. Mm -hmm. um, it's gluten-free that way. You, ha you got it. It's and a big buzzword. It is these days, <laughs> especially because, you know, people nowadays, well, we have celiac issues. We're going to add our quinoa on our parsley. Now, mm -hmm. the parsley itself, um, Lebanese friend, he always tells me, it's, it's not a bulgar salad. It's a parsley salad with bulgar. Exactly, but so, you rarely see it made correctly. No, you don't. We have our tomato. We have our mint. Nice. We have uh, our onion. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some of our olive oil. Lots of olive oil. Oh, we like olive oil. Olive oil. You want to bring over the salt and pepper? Well, sure. I got the pepper. It's right here. Oh, do you want mine? Right in front of would my face. Would you mind seasoning with me? I would love to. Now, do you have any seasoning in the quinoa already? I do. I okay. add a little bit of bay leaf and salt when I cook it. Great. Just simple. So, we're going to take our uh, lemon. I like mine really lemony. So do you I. too, yeah. yeah. And even if you want to make it pop a little bit, you can take a microplaner and put a little bit of zest in yeah. there. Yeah. Give it a little bit. Carry um, that flavor through. Can you make sure that pan's on? We're going to start see. Uh, this one here? Yep. Yep, you're good to go. You want it high? Yeah. Let's sear up our fish as I keep adding lemon to this because we want to make it really lemony. These lemons are beautiful too. So yeah, I like it. Turn lemony. up the onions a little bit. Turn them up? Yeah, let's get some caramel on there. Would you mind uh, stirring that up sure a little thing. bit? We're going to just season this very gingerly. Just a little bit of salt on mm -hmm. the skin. 
beautiful piece of barramundi. It's gorgeous. This was uh, off of about a 12 to 15 pound fish. Wow. On the flesh side, we're going to do salt and pepper. We're going to do regular uh, vegetable oil mm. in our pan for. Does it need anything else? Perfect. Beautiful. It's great. And then we're going to go skin side down first. We're going to hold it just a little bit mm -hmm. so that if it does have a tendency of bowing, because it's yeah. a very fresh fish, we're going to keep that skin down so we get a beautiful, crisp skin. Great. Call now for these events and more at 215-568-2400 or shop 24-7 at wanatix.com. Wanamaker Entertainment Group, we are the guy. Call now for these events and more at 215-568-2400 or shop 24-7 at wanatix.com. Wanamaker Entertainment Group, we are the guy. That's a nice thick piece of fish. I, I, think, I think it is the trick to it because most people have a tendency of uh, buying smaller fish because right. they're easier to, to work with. Mm -hmm. This advantage, you're not going to get that substance out of it. Exactly. And when they do get older, they have a little ma more maturity. Yep. Put on a little more fat. Yeah. We want them to have bread at least once. So. And I actually think a thicker piece of fish is easier to work with than a thin so one. Lot. It doesn't fall apart as <laughs> much. You know, it's Give easier it to maneuver control. around. Yeah. Okay, we've got some nice color notes showing up on yep. our onions. We're going to hit it with our almonds. And those are just raw almonds. They're actually toasted. Are they? Okay. Yeah. Um, I, again, because the, the black garlic has so much flavor. It's a lot of black like garlic the, in there, too. Yeah. And this is going to be for the romesco. Yep. Nice. Yep. It's a very different riff on a traditional romesco. Oh, very much so. Yeah, I mean, nice little fare. And we're going to yeah. hit it with some, uh, a little bit of uh, aged sherry vinegar. Very nice. And some olive oil. And at the time of when we do finish this up, um, just adjust the seasoning, salt and pepper. You know, I have some finished sauce right here. I'm gonna try that too. Yeah. Our bison is coming along beautifully. We got some nice color. And again, because it is such a lean meat, we wow. do want to make sure that uh, what we're doing is actually taking it and uh, searing it, leaving it on the rare side. Definitely. So. What I'm going to do is clean off this. Oh. We're going to unveil our pave potato. Great. That romesco, by the way, is fantastic. You like it? Oh my gosh, yeah. Lots it's really of flavor. different. You really taste the black garlic. I'm going to grab our chilled pav out of the oven, Look out at of that. the refrigerator. Now, what we want to do is uh, just take our knife, go along the outside a little bit. Mm -hmm. If it does have a tendency of sticking, now I did liberally put a decent amount of cream on the bottom. Right. If it does stick, you can. Just put it over some heat so that you allow it to release okay. from the bottom. That's a good tip. But either which way, we're gonna pop it out. Look at that. Beautiful. Easy peasy. And then you can cut it in whatever shape you want from that point. Obviously, because we're, you know, already have some round on our plate, we're mm -hmm. gonna come up with a, a different texture, different shape. So we're gonna do some nice squares. You like to play with your plating a lot. Yeah. So that again, holds together so well. Yeah, just a little bit of egg, you right? Know, not too much, because you don't want it to be a custard base that yeah. it, like, firms up too much. And what we'll do is actually put this in the oven, and you can reheat it back up. It'll Great. brulee up a little bit, and we'll be able to use that for our uh, dish. I'm gonna turn our bison on the end, get some color on the sides a little bit. The fish looks gorgeous. Oh, oh nice. Uh, Very nice. Now, would you finish that in the oven or you do it totally on the stove top? I like doing it on the stove top. Mm -hmm. When you do put it in the oven, it captures all the moisture on the inside yes. and has a tendency of the skin to get a little bit soft. Yeah. And we like it to be like a cracker. So. Definitely. No soggy skin here. No, not at all. <laughs> like I said, this romesco, we'll just put in a food processor pulse so mm -hmm. that's And you leave it pretty chunky too. You don't want to get it super smooth. I don't. I like a little texture. That's why I use a rubber close as opposed mm -hmm. to a blender. Right. Yeah. Even when I do my traditional romescos, I like keeping some nice texture on them. So I'll run them either through a food mill or just pulse them in the robo So. I've got some nice color on this. Really nice color. So tell me about the Savory Grill. Savory Grill. We're located in McCungee, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, been there a little over 17 years. Nice. Um, Great place to raise my kids. Oh, I bet. Great agricultural area. So we, we did have the privilege of raising our kids in a beautiful area. Um, but Savior Grill was designed to be 
one of those establishments where we could make everything in house. So we make everything straight through from from pastas to sorbets to ice cream. That's to amazing. Breads. Um, obviously, doing most of our fabrication and making the dishes look interesting and neat. So great. Got a little ring mold, I see. Yes, I do. I'm trying to keep it. You fancy, huh? Uh huh. Keep it all confined. So. What we're gonna do is put our tabbouleh in here mm -hmm. so that it doesn't get all over the whole plate. Now remember, with the red beets themselves, that's why I have these out here. You can, if you want, actually use the tops yeah. and actually cook them like you would a spinach or a shard or a mm -hmm. kale. Um, the stems themselves, what I've done is actually pickled them here. Oh, nice. So, again, you Look know, a little bit of red beet powder. How do you make that? Um, actually shave the beet or grate it. Or mm -hmm. When I was making my foam, I actually can take the, the beet juice and make the foam out of it, and then this um, is the liquid out of it. So all the pulp really? that's left behind, I throw in a dehydrator. Ooh. Beautiful, you know. We have some beet bottoms here. Mm. These are delicious. Again, we're adding a little bit of acidity to our plate. Definitely. The beet powder makes it look so pretty, though. It's like fairy dust. Yeah. <laughs> Let me grab the fish out of here. Looks very sexy. It really is. And this is the beet foam. Correct. So you're just taking beet juice and... And a little bit of uh, um, Versa Whip and a little xanthan mm -hmm. gum. And just, just whipping it up. Yep, keeps it. We have some nice airiness. I like whipping it up earlier and letting it sit because I like bigger holes. I don't want to throw okay. whipped cream on my dish. Sure. So, very simple. Yeah. That's a gorgeous plate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can't wait to try it. Call now for these events and more at 215-568-2400 or shop 24-7 at wanatix.com. Wanamaker Entertainment Group, we are the guy. Call now for these events and more at 215-568-2400 or shop 24-7 at wanatix.com. Wanamaker Entertainment Group, we are the guy. And we're gonna need another plate for... Our beautiful bison. Yes. We're gonna add some kale to this. And what do you have in there? It looks like mustard seeds? Mustard seed, a little lemon, and olive oil salt. Very nice. simple. And you just blanched that? No. Macerate. Break That's it, it really? Oh, Very nice. Very simple. That I'd like to try. You like food? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many interesting components here. I like to taste them all by themselves. And then we're going to take our That's mascot. That's awesome. Lemon, mustard seeds, and you just you massage it a little bit? Yep. Literally crush mm -hmm. it yeah. in your hands. Yep. That's great. The texture is so soft. We're going to cut this a little bit just to show the inside. Nice. Because it is so beautiful. really is. Voila. Gorgeous, Chef. Thank this you. is fantastic. Thank you. Let's bring it over to join the Baramundi. Sure. Get ready to eat. So we've got Pam Deller. She's the publisher from Lehigh Valley Style Magazine. Hi, and of course, Paul Conaway, Hi, CEO Hello. and chairman of Wanamaker Entertainment. Come on Hi, in, guys. Thanks for having us. We've been smelling this for the last half hour. <laughs> Isn't this it's just amazing. the most beautiful set of dishes you've ever seen? It Looks, is. Looks great. <laughs> well, let me pass out some wine. There you are. Thank, thank you. you. Chef. Aw, oh, thank you. Let's have a toast. Cheers. 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 Cheers, Sean. To all of you. Thank you. Mmm. That's, That's delicious. Nice. It nice. is. That's very nice. All right. Now time to taste. Try. Thank you. You're welcome. Knives. It's like I can't even decide which one I want to go for <laughs> first, but I guess I'll start over here and you guys can work on the bison. How's that sound? All right. That sounds like a deal. Oh, yeah. That skin is crispity crackly. Oh, that looks beautiful. Okay. You we did a great job. Okay, let me move my glass for you. I'm going to move that. There you go. It looked mm. like dangerous. Mm. Mm. Enough lemon. Right? <laughs> it's perfect. Mm -hmm. mm. I've been eyeing I up agree. these potatoes. Wow, it's really lean. I'm gonna try that mushroom. You guys mm. have to try the barramundi. I'm coming over. Mmm. The mushrooms are just barely pickled. You still really get the mm. flavor. Isn't that great? It's delicious. This would be a great dish for Valentine's Day. I agree. With the beautiful beet foam and all of the little beets, like little hearts all over the plate. Sexy. 
It does look sexy. <laughs> it's coming up right around the corner, too. Well, I look forward to seeing your spread in Lehigh Valley Style magazine. Yes, Definitely. thank you for sharing mm. the, these recipes in the January edition of Lehigh Valley Style. We've always loved to have you in the magazine, Sean. We always love to come to the restaurant, come to Savory Grill, see you and Dorothy. So we appreciate you sharing and, um, and cooking for the Chef's Kitchen. It's our pleasure. And Fantastic. Paul, it's good to see you here again today, and we're glad to have you in the magazine as well, because we, now we know where when there's a sold out show or anything we want to see anywhere, we know to uh, give you a call at Wanamaker Entertainment or look in the pages of Lehigh Valley Style. Yep, all our information will be in there, all our upcoming events. All right, well, thanks Cheers. again. Cheers. Cheers. My glass is lost. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, you have to get in. <laughs> Cheers. Thank it's you. Cheers. Thanks again.